to play ball. Welcome to the podcast with no limits. Whether it be sports, current events, or random thoughts, this is the place to step in and stay a while. Your host is a proud alumnus of Rio Hondo Prep, a former minor league baseball umpire, and a man with strong opinions. Welcome to the Get Home Safe podcast and your host, Matt Hersema. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Get Home Safe. It is a Monday edition of the podcast, July 19th, I believe here on a Monday morning. You guys are listening to this Monday, but it is in fact uh, Sunday night for me. I uh, had a pretty good weekend, pretty good weekend indeed. Um, a fast weekend as always, but uh, a good one nonetheless. Got home pretty late uh, on uh, Saturday night from work. Um uh, from FedEx and everything, but I will say it's Saturday night was uh, a pretty good time. And I will let Bill Barnes tell you more about that on Wednesday when he is here for the weekly Wednesday weigh-in. We are going to record on uh, twos, Tuesday probably, uh, but uh, Bill Barnes and I had a, had a pretty good time on, uh, on uh, uh, excuse me, Saturday night. Uh, really good time. Excuse me while I uh, I uh, play around with our Zoom meeting here. I, I am trying to get on a couple guests here um, that uh, I think uh, you guys will enjoy. Some people that have been on here before, but some people that uh, I think will spice up the Monday show. But I wanted to tell you guys um, on the uh, on Saturday night. Yeah, with Bill Barnes and I uh, met up. We, uh, I had work until like seven 30 bill Barnes and I, uh, our, our lovely ladies, uh, his, uh, his, uh, girlfriend and, uh, my girlfriend, Valerie Burns, we got together and, uh, had, had a good time. That's all I can really say. We, we met up. It was kind of our, our protest, I would say out in, uh, not, not LA County, but it was out in, um, I'm not sure if it was Riverside County or San Bernardino County, but. Uh, nonetheless, we had a good time. We uh, we had some uh, adult beverages and just uh, enjoyed ourselves, enjoyed uh, hanging out. It had been a while since Bill and I had gone out, let alone uh, bring our ladies and such. And we had a great time. We had some pizza at the table. We uh, we ran into some random people. It was just a, a little sense of normalcy, which was awesome in 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 uh, in that regard. Uh, I'm gonna get into this with Bill on. What day will that be? No, we're going to record on Tuesday for the weekly Wednesday weigh-in. But uh, Bill and I uh, talked a little bit on Saturday night about some of the things we are going to talk about for the weekly Wednesday weigh-in. And a big part of that was the entire uh, LA County new, new, well, old, we should say, old um, mandate going backwards, going back in time, if you will with the whole lockdown, the whole, uh, uh, the mask mandate really, uh, in the sense that anything indoors, you have to wear a mask. And here's what I want to say about that. And I'm going to, and, and again, I'm going to talk about this with Bill Barnes. I promise you that. But for me, I feel bad for the small businesses in LA County. I feel bad for, for people that are just trying to get back to normal and are trying to, um, you know, not live in this COVID hysteria, this COVID fear. Um, I, for me personally, I'm spending my money uh, outside of LA County. I will drive uh, outside of the area. I will do whatever is necessary, um, but I am not going to be uh, supporting uh, LA County because of the uh, the draconian uh, BS, in my opinion of the, the going backwards. And, and I hope that it does not pave the way for the rest of the country uh, here as far as mass mandates and everything. And you can say, oh, Matt, you, you know, you, you're not trying to be safe or whatever. I have a podcast called Get Home Safe. So I really don't, no, I, 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 all kidding aside. Uh, but anyway, I have more thoughts on this. However, however, we have a surprise uh, guest that is uh, calling in right now. Let's bring him right on the program. You guys uh, saw him last week. Uh, he told me he might be available tonight. So we're going to see if he is in fact there. He is my good brother, Sam Hersema. He's made time for us on a Sunday night. He's connecting to audio. I think he's there. There he is. 
and he has a beautiful shirt on. Uh, it, it's selling for nine 99 on the streets of Cuba. Currently nice shirt, Sam looking good. My brother. Nine 99. I would never pay that much for a shirt. Oh, Sam, come on. The, uh, the, uh, the Cuban people are struggling out there. You, you got to do your goodwill. Yeah, that's cool. I, I feel for them. I feel for them. I, I'll, uh, I'll donate if Jorge Masvidal tells me to donate. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, uh, Sam, it's, it's Sunday night. I know it's late. I know you're a, a working man. You got to get up early tomorrow and get to work. And I, and I, I was debating whether to just do a Monday morning podcast or to do one Sunday night. Uh, but I'm glad you were available for a few minutes. We're not going to spend the whole hour like we usually do just, uh, you know, a, a few minutes here. Uh, what's on your mind, Sam? How's your, how's your weekend been? Uh, pretty good, actually. Just, uh, relaxing uh, having uh, dealing with some back issues unfortunately and uh you know i'm actually uh i'm actually kind of babysitting right now whoa we got a dog there for not watching on youtube he's pissed <laughs> he looks to be yeah. just fine yeah i mean that's the dream right there we talked oh. about that last week why, why do you want to do anything just oh uh, man perfect day is doing nothing right well, well, I got to tell you, Sam, you know, last week you, you came back on the air for the first time in a long time. And, and you know, if, if you're anything, it's it's humble. You're a very humble person. I say that tongue in cheek. And you were telling me all week, man, I come on this show, you get your ratings go through the roof. Uh, Sam was, was, of course, telling me how many plays his, his uh, episode had on YouTube and, and this and that. I mean, I, I think with your with your humble humility attitude that uh, you might be back on here, not maybe not weekly, but semi weekly, maybe a couple times a month because uh, you sure do love uh, putting out good ratings. Well, as always, it's very hard to be humble when you're me. <laughs> it's, you know, like when, when you get more views than Bill Barnes, it's, you know, it's, it's just hard to uh, ignore that fact, but you know, it, it is what it is. And uh Hopefully Bill's up to the challenge. Those are fighting words, man. You know, I had a good time with Bill last night, Sam. And, you know, I, I've seen Bill happy a time or two with, you know, different, uh, you know, he, he's dated around a little bit. I met uh, his, uh, we'll call her girlfriend. I don't know what their official title is, but I met her. And uh, I got to tell you, Bill has definitely outkicked his coverage. His charm has, uh, I, I, I don't even know. It's taken him to, to the big leagues, really. Uh, we had, it was nice being out. And I know that in LA County at midnight uh, on Saturday night, the mask mandate was back out that, you know, I, I encourage people to, to not follow, but uh, it was nice being out with Bill, with Val, with, uh, with Bill's lovely lady and just having a few drinks and laughing and enjoying life uh, with the day off the next day. So uh, we had a great time. I can't wait to hear from Bill. Uh, in a couple of days as we talk about all that on our weekly Wednesday weigh-in. So I like the competitiveness, Sam. I like that you're coming in with the attitude of, I got to be better than Bill Barnes. No, I got to be better than everybody. I mean, <laughs> when you got, when you got this face right here, come on, you're going to get the views, man. You know what you, you have the humility uh, vibe that I do not. I well, I should say I do have, I am a shy, you are, the opposite of humble, whatever that is. Uh, I got to ask you, Sam, where did you get that shirt? I'm, I'm loving the shirt. Ooh, uh, I actually, I bought this about a year or two ago, along with a America hat, which is in the other room right now. Uh, it was America as fuck. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, America AF, if you want to be politically correct. AF, but, oh yeah, yeah. yeah it, well, was a good, it was a good buy, actually. Oh, yeah. You know what's funny? two years ago still looks good. I, you know I'd what's say. you know what's funny? Uncle Sam here, my brother. Uh, 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 you know, some people find the American flag truly offensive. I mean, it, it started on July. Well, it's been going on a while, but people crying into their social media on July Fourth. Uh, people continuing to blame America, even though American flags are being waved in Cuba, of all places, as a symbol of freedom and hey we want actual freedom and liberty not this uh, this bs communism so what do you make sam of people that 
treat the American flag like it is. Uh, I mean, honestly, they treat it like it's a swastika or something, some other evil uh, symbol. I mean, you're wearing an American flag on your shoulder there. You got America across your chest. I mean, what do you want to say to these people that are so ungrateful to the United States of America? Well, one thing, you don't know your fucking history. Mm. Two, you're trying to change history. And if you don't like it, fuck off and get the fuck out of the country. <laughs> I'm with you, my brother. Well and said. I'll pay, uh, like I, I will, I will echo Freddie Monoblanco's thoughts on that. You want to go spend, you want to go spend some time in a communist country. I'll help pay for you to go there. I'll, I'll give you a plane ticket. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spend money for you to stay there, but I'll give you a plane ticket. You want to go spend time there? You want to go experience a socialist country or a communist country? Just go right ahead. I'll help you out. Oh, I'm with you, man. Let's start a GoFundMe. Let's let's send whoever wants to try that out. Uh, let's send them. I guarantee, Sam, those people come crawling back to the United States on their hands and knees through the ocean. Uh, they get to our shores. They kiss the ground before they come up off the ground, and they start sing, singing the uh, the Star Spangled Banner. Uh, you know. Uh, but, but before they uh, they say any more bad words uh, of America, but it's funny. Some people, as you know, Sam, they won't they won't put uh, people don't put their money where their mouth is. People talk a big game, whatever the subject may be, but they don't step forward and are like, "Yeah, I'll do it. I'm tough. I'll, I'll you know." Peop, people want to run their mouth all the time. I think that's a big issue with uh, 2021 these days. Well, and even even so, or. So my lady actually came from a communist country. We're, we won't go into details on that. I will get more actual solid information on it, but they left it. They aren't going back to it. And to that point, what I was I was a uh, I was looking at Freddie my, I was looking at Freddie's my boy Freddie's site again and I and I I saw a gentleman I, I will respect him and not name him. What in the hell is a democratic socialism? Yeah, I, I honestly do not know what that means. I, I, you know, people, the thing is those on the left, uh, they, they love to control the language. They change terms. They, they try, they use this magical comfort food language, I guess, uh, democratic socialists. I don't, I don't know what that is to your point. Um, it, it's crazy. And it's interesting to me that, you, in fact, know somebody, uh, your lady, as you were saying, who has firsthand knowledge, firsthand uh, experience, maybe not her, but her family with communism countries, socialism countries. And it's really funny, Sam, the people that promote communism, promote socialism, they never seem to ask those who have gone through it. They don't kind of want those opinions. They don't fit their narrative. So why do you think that is? They just believe what they're told and they're off in their own little fairy wonderland. They, they think that it will be different and it won't be. It's all, it's all a step process as we, as we've seen over and over and over again, like, you know, you, they're going to get you to believe that something is good. Something, something is right. But you know, you're going to be in the same thing that like Venezuela's in that uh, Vietnam's in that uh, Cuba's in right now. If we're not careful, it's not, this country is still great, but we as people like you and myself, we're trying to prevent, we're trying to prevent that type of shit from happening. And if you don't nip this shit in the bud, we're, we're getting close. Right. You're absolutely right, man. And you know, Sam, when we were growing up, our parents uh, did a damn good job really of showing us right versus wrong and tried to paint a picture for us as best as possible um, but we but we live in this world now in 2021 where, uh, you know, black and white, right and wrong, it, it's not that clear. I thought dad and mom did a great job for us as far, as far as educating us what is right, what is wrong. And now it seems like things are just absolutely backwards, whereas uh, people defend the Cuban government, people defend, uh, you know, uh, possible socialism in America, like everything is so backwards. Kids are not disciplined anymore. There's no, everyone gets a trophy. I mean, it's so backwards from like the way you and I were raised. I don't want to be that guy. That's like back in my day, uh, you know, in the, in the nineties or whatever, but it does feel that way. It feels that way where 
people before us, I mean, they kind of were treated with, you know, what's right and wrong. And, and in 2021, man, I, I don't know. I feel like we're losing this sense of uh, morality in our country. I agree. Yeah. It's yeah, you, uh, you hit it on the nose right there. Everything, everything is completely backwards right now. Being, being good is now bad. Uh, I, I honestly don't know really what to say further about that without a, my language being extra explicit. <laughs> so, so can I ask, um, and you don't have to go into details if you don't want, but uh, for your girlfriend and what she has said and her family, I mean, are they, are they just in shock of how uh, people who have no understanding of what the people in Cuba, for example, are fighting for are protesting over are they in shocked at and appalled maybe at how some americans are reacting to this the fact that they have no idea what it's like but want to uh, pursue perhaps communism and socialism uh, i can't i can't speak for them but i i do know that i do know that um their entire family is against stuff like that i don't i I'm, I'm gonna be a little pc on this answer because it's not my place to answer for them but uh i i do know that you won't see any one of them wearing a fidel castro t-shirt amen man. like like the hero of uh the san francisco 49ers and yes. the hero of the black panthers and the hero of whatever the <laughs> fuck <laughs> shut the fuck up dude no no you know, I, I thought uh, Jorge Masvidal, who's of Cuban descent, right? His family's from there and everything, uh, had, had a great post uh, slamming Colin Kaepernick, slamming those who uh, want to pursue uh, socialism, communism, who think it's a good idea. Uh, and, and, and just one of many reasons why I love the UFC. I love the product that comes out of there. I posted a, a, a something on Facebook about a, an Iranian fighter. I think it was, I could be wrong, but uh, he was talking about it. I mean, there's so many examples of people who firsthand have been through this or have family who've been through it yet. The media, the left in this country, they don't want to like, I don't know, accept their accounts of what they've gone through. It's crazy to me. All you got to do is listen to people who've actually gone through it to know this is not a good idea. Yeah, anybody who has gone through it, name name one person. One. And I just keep one. I keep I keep going back to Fred, but he his posts are just the best. Yeah. He trolls he trolls everybody on it. And everybody he says, name one, name one person. Give me one person that's lived through it that will say it's a good idea. And that's it. you know, no one's been able to say anything. So well, you don't understand, you know, that was in the past, blah, 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 blah. It, it's, it's hilarious how we don't, uh, you know, listen to those who've, who've been through it. So, uh, you know, America's a, a crazy, scary place right now, Sam. And I think, I, you know, where I think we're eventually going. So in the, in the fifties and the sixties, there was all of this fighting over segregation, right? Everything was equal. We don't need, uh, you know, uh, black and white this or, or whatever. And, and I completely agree with that. We need equality. Everybody should have opportunity to have the same, uh, experiences, the same opportunities, um, uh, the same resources. Absolutely. hundred percent. That's what, uh, the civil rights really were, were, uh, fought for in the sixties and everything. But now in 2021, even 2020, like there's this, there's this push for more, for more, uh, different types of segregation, you know, a certain race only for their, for their, uh, graduations, right. On college campuses, um, uh, dorms, all these kinds of things. And, and if you don't believe me, just look it up. It, it's crazy to me that, that we're at that age. And I personally think that, where we're headed, we might be headed towards a, a, a how do I say this? Like a, uh, a time here upcoming where there's red states and blue states. And what I mean by that is you got to pick. You got to pick the way in which you want to be governed. Do you want to be governed in a state? You want to live in a state in a state where they believe in police, they believe in low taxes, they believe in traditional, probably conservative things versus a blue state. Defund the police. Let everyone uh, live how they want to be. Uh, don't pursue criminals. Don't do any of that stuff. 
I don't want to say it, but I think I have to. I think the United States of America is almost headed that direction where it's like, oh, you, oh, these are the things you believe? Okay, this is how your state's going to be now. And we're all going to have to make a decision. Do you want to live in this red state or blue state? And call it whatever you want. But do you kind of understand what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely do. And state-wise, you and I are fucked right now. <laughs> you know, if we're going to go, if, we're, if you break it down to county, we live in some, we both live in two pretty good counties right now. You know, it's a, uh, uh, Orange County is a little more red than people want to realize. But yeah, I see that happening. I, you know, nobody wants to say civil war, but if we don't start doing something like that, like it, it's very close to happening. Yeah. And, and, and I don't want this segregation. I don't want people uh, living over here, living there. I want America to, to be united, to be uh, the United States of America. But it's crazy to even think about. I'm just throwing out a hypothesis, right? Like so many people who hate the police in these big cities, LA, New York, Chicago. Uh, okay, fine. Run your cities that way. Go ahead. Good luck to you. But as far as law and order goes, let's run those cities uh, and let's have people migrate there who who want to uh, have cities with law and order. And let's see how well they do. You know, Washington, D.C. has some of the biggest, most restrictive. That's not a city I know, but it is technically whatever. Um, they have some of the biggest restrictive gun laws out there. Chicago, massive gun control laws. Yet these two areas continue to have massive gun violence. So I, I'm all over the place, I know, but uh, if if you if you limit people and their 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 right to bear arms, if you try to control guns, guess what? You don't end up controlling guns. You get shootings right outside of stadiums, even though those shootings are illegal. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, uh, definitely. It, let, let's look at the let's look at the total number of shootings in a place called uh, I don't oh I don't know just off the top of my head uh, Williams Arizona. Mm. Or Flagstaff. Let's look at the total number of shootings there, where literally everybody is carrying something, <laughs> and law and order does mean something there. So, and let's look at LA. Then you know, and the argument is Sam that there's there's you know ten million people there, and so there's more cause for that. But but I think you and I, if we dig a little deeper, I'm with you. No, being re being realistic. It's about being realistic, man. Like L.A., you allowed you allowed this shit to happen. I'm right. And Bill Barnes spoke to some of this shit. Like it's about like letting certain individuals run the damn county, mm -hmm. letting everybody get away with murder. It's it's not. You're reaping what you sow at this point. Yeah, and that's why that's what we're seeing with these bigger cities. Big time. And, and LA is a, we live out here. It's a, it's a bigger threat. Neither you nor I lives in LA County anymore. Um, but man, over the weekend, Sam, with this mask mandate, I mean, some people want to cling to this virus. They want to cling to this hysteria and LA County is among the worst leadership in the entire country. In my opinion. I mean, what are your thoughts on LA County going, uh, going backwards after a month ago when the governor of California, uh, New Salini, when he said, oh, the mask mandate's lifted. Now, all of a sudden, in L.A. County, which is going against the CDC directive, uh, they're going back to masks indoors. What do you make of all that? I, I don't know what they're doing at this point. I, I do realize there's a new variant and Delta, whatever the fuck it's called, but... I, it's just, a, it's over, what is it, um, over compensating? Yeah. It's over preparing over whatever, like, you know, you, you know, Newsom's not, Newsom's not going to be shutting down the state anytime soon because he, you know, he's in the midst of a recall. So the counties are going to be shutting things down. Yeah. It's like a transfer behalf. of power yeah. on his yeah, behalf. Exactly. Well on, said on his behalf. Yeah. Yeah. That's my opinion. Yeah, he has no power to, because if, if he was not up for a recall, he would have shut the entire state down a few days ago. But now LA County says, don't worry, Gavin, we'll do it. 
Uh, we're the biggest county in all of California. As far as population goes, we will make sure that uh, your overlord, uh, you know, decrees uh, go through. So it's amazing to me, Sam. Look, I know some people are more sensitive to the coronavirus than other people are. Um, and you want to be safe. I'm not trying to be disrespectful to those that are concerned more than others, or maybe have family members who are, I don't know, more, more sensitive to this whole thing, but you know, your, your feelings don't, uh, what's the saying? Uh, my, my, my rights don't end where your feelings start or whatever the, the, the phrase is. I mean, so many people are terrified of this thing. Sam, I don't know you uh, that well, even though you've been my brother for 33 years. Uh, all kidding aside, you know, you don't want to die to my knowledge. You don't want to die. And I mean, when you lay your head down to rest at night, do you, are you terrified that you might get COVID and die? No, I'm not scared of it at all. I, but I, I am, I, I'm, I'm going to stick to my original assessment I'm going to stick to my original beliefs. I do hope the country shut or the state shuts back down from, for the better of me. <laughs> no. Less traffic. You know, you know, yeah. And less traffic. Come on. 40 minutes is up to, is back up to like an hour and 45 minutes now. It's ridiculous. You ever tried driving down the four or five freeway? That's enough to make you want to die to answer your first question. <laughs> but, but, uh, but no, you know, in all seriousness, like, no, I'm, I'm, I've never been scared that I'm going to die of it. Well, you know, why not? I, I, why not? I'm, Other people are, you know, the news promotes all this. How come, how come you're not, how come you can see the same uh, news media coverage as me or someone else who's terrified of it? How come you are not scared of it as some, you know, someone who thinks rationally? Uh, percentages. Yeah. percentages of deaths yeah you don't want to you obviously don't want to go around somebody who has who's 80 years old and is already having health issues when you might have covid i understand that but any logical person would not be around somebody who has that yeah you know it's you wouldn't be around somebody that is already at risk of a cold of a well, flu of well, like COVID, we hear, anything like that yeah 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 it's like any any uh, virus or sickness or disease i mean I think the numbers have been skewed and, and all it, all anybody wants to talk about is, Oh, 600,000 people have debt have died. No, they don't talk about how many cases have not died. You know what I mean? Like 99% of, of whatever that is, uh, you know, have not died and the overwhelming majority, I'm sure there's some exceptions. Sure. There's been a, a kid or two who, who has died. There's been uh, someone your age, Sam, who has died, but the overwhelming majority of those who've died, I don't want to be insensitive here, but a lot of them may have even passed away without COVID because of their age or because of their, uh, their situation. And, you know, uh, you know, all kidding aside, I, I'll, I might get COVID next week and pass away. Cause I'm not the, uh, the, the, the slimmest of guys. I, I got some weight to lose and everything, but I just think overall with the statistics, with the percentages, some people are just terrified of this thing. And I think for a lot of us who aren't afraid to go to a bar, afraid to go to a grocery store without a mask on, we're just like, man, if it happens, it happens. Exactly. And you know, if it does happen, I will gladly take over the Get Home Safe podcast for you. <laughs> It'll be definitely very different, but I will take it over for you. As your brother, I can do that for you. That's my brother. God damn it. As, as I know Val would be extremely uh, happy with, you know, I've, I've had my suspicions about you and Val for a lot of years now. And, and now I know COVID started so you could take over the podcast and my girlfriend. It's a part of my 10 year plan. <laughs> you know, Sam, your show on Monday, man, it got a lot of plays as we talked about you humility uh, not too long ago. And uh, you know, I think there is a demand. There is a, a wanting of you to be on here weekly. I know you're a very busy man, but I think we got to find time on Sundays, whether it be Sunday morning over coffee or uh, Sunday evening over uh, a Jack Daniel, we, we need to find time to record at least 15, 20 minutes, uh, of the brothers, the, the brothers, uh, Hershmer brothers segment here, because people love you. I don't know why, but they love you. 
people don't love me trust me <laughs> uh, it's more of a this guy isn't dead yet let's see what he has to say but <laughs> you know if people want to watch i'll continue to jump on and i'll do it for you but yeah it's a it's a, it's a, it's a good feeling to know that i'm bringing numbers to your podcast that way when i take it over the numbers will be high already i'll be able to cash out that's it. All you got to change is the first name on the title and, and, and you're rolling. So um, yeah. let's try to keep this going. I know it's hard. Uh, thank you for staying up with me late Sunday night here as we recorded, but uh, I really do mean it. People, I, I don't know if, if it's necessary. They love you, but they love our dynamic. They love us arguing. They love us uh, agreeing, whatever the case is. I think it fits. And I think it's very, it's a very good way to start the week really on the get home safe podcast. Yeah, it starts off the week. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, and honestly, as you know, it's middle of July now. Uh, we're six weeks away from football. Uh, if uh, you know the woke, the woke, woke, uh, woke, whoever doesn't ruin that. Um, hopefully, we're, we're looking at a college season, an NFL season, and we can just talk talk sports and not uh, about mask mandates and things. So. I went into a grocery store today, Sam, still 90% of the people wearing masks. I did not. Uh, it was very liberating. And I just kind of chuckled the whole time while I uh, picked up some vegetables and some Jack Daniels, of course. Well, and to anybody that watched last weekend, Ooh. 1562, <laughs> get a bottle. Evan Williams. Look at you. JV, JV, man. So it's half the price of Jack Daniels. And you just, you drink it just because you're like, eh, whatever. It's good. Well, when you, when you go through that bottle once every four days, you know, you need to start thinking about prices. <laughs> you're very economical. I love it. Well, yeah. when you're paying five seventy five for gas, yeah, you gotta, you gotta cut costs somehow and it's gotta be uh, probably your whiskey. Yeah. Exactly. What time, what time of night are you pouring your, your first uh, Evan Williams? You're, you're off at what? Five, you get home by five thirty. What's about six o'clock, six six thirty. Yeah, cigarette yeah. first, and then and then uh, Evan Williams. No, by the end of the day, I need a whiskey first and a cigarette. Cigarette. That's the only time in life where cigarette comes second. Where you where you flip them? <laughs> yeah. Well, you need to clear up the you need the passageway. You need you need to have that drink of whiskey. It clears everything up. It's like oh, I like it. Now I can do this. I like it. You we'll see, see it. It. you see in a talking Sopranos over here. Oh yes. So for those not watching on YouTube, so if you if you haven't watched the Sopranos, uh, this is a favorite photo of Sam and mine. Um, he got it made or his girlfriend got it made. I think it shows Tony Soprano smoking a cigar with an AK 47 in his lap as he's outside. I think it's season six. He's waiting for a bear within their neighborhood or something, but it's a great shot. It's uh, what did you call it? The official photo of the Sam Demick 2020. Oh, it's called Sam Demick 2020, and I'll do you one better. My lady actually drew this one. Oh, wow. This, this was her title of the actual painting. Fantastic. Yeah, so it was like it was missing whiskey, but it was missing whiskey from the scene. So, <laughs> Yeah, it was. Well, I, I uh, all kidding aside, I would love to uh, meet her, hang out with her here very soon. I, I'm a great fan of her work. I'd love uh, to talk about uh, her family history and think, no, just, just to meet her and hang out would be awesome. So uh, hopefully soon, but Sam, thanks for being here, man. This is great. Let's try to do again. We don't need a long time. It doesn't have to be a full hour. If it's 15, 20 minutes, uh, we can talk about just about anything. I, I think you have some great ideas, some great opinions that I love to share with the audience here on the get home safe podcast. I'm always in for a good 15, 20 minutes. So as long as you don't interrupt my whiskey time, we're, we're good to go. <laughs> Sounds good, man. Well, I uh, have one more for me. Have a great uh, rest of your week and have a great uh, week. We'll chat during, we'll chat during the week and uh, maybe next weekend we'll, we'll hook up again here on the, on the podcast. And uh, yeah, man, thanks. I, I appreciate it. I think I'm going to bring on uh, Todd Carson now on a Sunday night, a total random, uh, uh, guest segment, but I asked him what he was doing and he said he would come on. So, uh, I got to bump you for Todd Carson. I know you're probably not too offended by that. Uh, I'm never offended by a man with the same birthday. <laughs> That's right. May 15th Mondays is what we'll call it. Mm -hmm. Sam, thanks for being here, man. I appreciate it, brother. And, uh, let's talk again next week. 
All right. Thanks for having me. Say hi to coach for me. Oh, indeed. Nice shirt, my man. All right, man. Later. Later. Let's see if I can do this right. Okay, I did it. I did it right. Got Sam out of there. So uh, my brother, Sam Hurst, I love him. Um, I appreciate him coming on the program, although briefly, um, just to chat with me about uh, about anything. And this was totally random. I said, I hit him up. I hit Todd Carson up. I said, hey, what do you guys uh, got going on Sunday night? Can we chat for a few minutes? So uh, Todd Carson's a big listener of the program. If he's available, he's willing to come on. So uh, I like listening to him uh, or having him with me here. Uh, Colin Morikawa, guys, won the uh, the Open, the British Open, over the weekend. His second major since he won uh, the PGA Championship last year in 2020. Uh, so two majors here in the last year for Colin Morikawa, a guy who is from the uh, Los Angeles area, went to school at La Cunata High School. So good for him, played his college golf at uh, Cal Berkeley. So uh, a great job, Colin. Hopefully uh, many more uh, championship, major championships here in the very near future. So that was pretty cool to see. I didn't get to watch any of it, uh, really, the, uh, the British Open over the weekend, even though I tried to tune in a little bit here to the um, – to the uh, the uh, the weekends, or excuse me, the uh, the majors or whatever. Uh, but let me see. I wrote down a few things here outside of Colin uh, Morikawa uh, regarding uh, some topics and such. Scary scene in Washington D.C. Uh, during the game. There were some gunshots outside the stadium. Apparently, three people were hit. It was it was crazy. The uh, the fans and the players players are running off the field. Fans are running out of the exits, and some of them jumping into the dugouts and everything. Uh, that was Saturday night, a uh, pretty wild scene. So uh, hopefully everyone is okay. It's, uh, it's, it's been a few days now and they'll continue that game. But uh, I was really, really worried that there was going to be a lot of people uh, injured in that event. But uh, fortunately, only three. Uh, hopefully they are doing well. Okay, at this time, we are going to be joined by Todd. This is the first time, guys, by the way, we've had two guests at two different times here on the Get Home Safe podcast. We did do a roundtable uh, at one time, but I'm bringing on my good friend, Todd Carson. Now see what he's up to. Uh, he is calling in from weed, California, way up in uh, Northern California. And, uh, let's see, he's connecting to audio. He's connecting to a few things. I think, uh, I just wanted to say hello to my good friend, Todd. There he is. Mr. Todd Carson. What's going on, my friend. Hey, <laughs> pleasantly uh surprised it's your text a few minutes ago yeah um good to fly. it's the first time I, i've oh we're, we're having some technical uh difficulties with your sound there todd uh hopefully the connection gets a little bit better uh but yeah i just sent out a random text to you sunday night hey what are you doing would you like to uh come on the program uh briefly for a little bit here so uh todd can you hear us a little bit better now Yes, I think we're good. Okay, awesome, man. How was your How's your weekend? What's uh, What's new and exciting? Oh well, you know we are down in uh, Southern California. We got here Saturday night. Um, it's our becoming an annual tradition to for the family to meet in uh, Carlsbad and stay there for a few days. So we arrived Saturday and they are at my brother's in temple city right now and um you know this is something we look forward to all your uh the kids talk about it um so we're gonna leave tomorrow for carlsbad and be there till friday so super nice man very cool to hear i know when, when i was a kid you know family gatherings didn't happen all that often so you kind of uh when you did do those trips especially in the summer usually uh, it was, it was pretty exciting and you didn't quite get it all as a kid, but it's cool to see your kids, uh, it, it, loving that experience really. And I'm sure, uh, you know, the, the other family members as well. Oh yeah. The, especially the, the, uh, our, our kids, just friends, you know, uh, my sister from Alabama is, is here and, um, my sons get to hang out with her sons and uh, our two oldest are just best buds, even though they spend, you know, a couple of days a year together. 
<laughs> Very cool, man. Well, the connection is a little delayed. We'll try to keep going here as best we can. Uh, Todd, uh, did you get a chance to listen? Uh, well, I know you're a very loyal listener to the program, but, uh, one of your good friends and, uh, former teammates, Dave, Joe, I finally dragged him on the program here a few weeks ago. What did you think of, uh, our conversation with Dave, Joe? Oh, well, I enjoyed it so much. Uh, Dave and I are good friends and, uh, you know, we don't see each other often. Um, but you know, just hearing him talk, that's the same guy I grew up with. <laughs> you know, all the stuff sharing and all the memories. The the show is especially uh enjoyable when it's someone you have a, a connection with, especially like a deep connection like Dave and I have. And so uh yeah, I was pretty fired up to hear him. <laughs> I you know, I thought I I had never I've never seen him play. I've heard plenty of stories from you, from Pete Clark, from Mark Carson, from all kinds of guys talking about Dave. I've uh, chatted with him here and there at, at games, but the second I started talking with him, the very second, I, I felt like, okay, this is a guy I would have loved to have been teammates with. I mean, of all the teammates you had, you, there, you, you had a, a fair share of great ones, but to me, in my, my hour and a half talking to him, I was like, okay, this is the ultimate teammate right here. Definitely. Uh, you know, he's, because uh, you had asked me, like, what, what should the title of the show be? And uh, you mentioned Reckless Abandon. I, I understand that totally. Like, as a football player, that describes him really well. Uh, puts, puts a people's mind about, you know, the, the tough uh, – no regard for your body type player, but I just couldn't go with the word reckless because he was, Dave was anything but reckless. You know, he was very calculated in everything he did. Um, you know, he was the guy, uh, we had to practice, I think it was about two hours of piano every week. And um, so when we were like juniors and seniors, so uh, I'd come down uh, Sunday evening, uh, we show up for our little uh, group meetings and uh, he'd be out in Carolyn Hall there with the TV on, uh, maybe sleeping, maybe not, but banging away at the piano, uh, you know, because, you know, he was just, that's what he do. So he was going to find a way to do it and, and time's done while he was at it. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, I remember... Uh, one game in particular, we were playing against Brentwood and uh, uh, was on the team. And he was a big dude and uh, he played line, but then once uh, he ran up to the sideline, threw his like hand pad off. And, uh, you know, so we knew, they, we knew it was kind of a pass. Oh, they um, so anyways, they, they, they flip the ball to him. They come around and Dave and I are there and, and I'm bigger instead of 145, I was like 148 or something, <laughs> uh, you know, not much bigger, but he chose Dave and, uh, he just, you know, Dave just, it's like when you get tackled by Dave, it's all, all of a sudden your feet are gone and you're on the ground, usually on your back. And I just looked at him and said, you made the wrong choice, brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, well, yeah, the little Todd Carson, uh, little trash talk, which, which I haven't talked to you about, but yeah, Todd you used to teach me how to talk a little trash back in the day. We'll get into that someday. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, my dad taught me, uh, and I hope I did it in his spirit because it was always like all in good fun. Yeah. Um, I had a little meaner edge when I was not my best self. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> if you have the right spirit, it's so fun. It just adds, adds to the, uh, the competition and the excitement and the, uh, it's just fun, especially when you got people back and forth. So it's funny the things you remember. I was in eighth grade and you had told me you were starting to, develop me as a player and a, and a, and a young man and everything. And 
you were telling me, basically, it was funny. You're educating me on how obviously be a godly man and, and make good decisions and live a godly life. But you were also encouraging me in a sense of, hey, everyone needs a role on a team. And maybe your role is to get under the skin of the opponent. And uh, you were kind of showing me that uh, it's, you know, there's that fine line of competition and, and godly living, right? But like you showed me, you said something, I, you sent me in the game for like the last two minutes of a half one time against uh, Pasadena Poly, their best player was Ryan Black, who we played it as seniors and everything. And he went, ended up going to Northwestern, but we were in eighth grade and you, you said, hey, Matt, go give that guy something to think about for the last two minutes of the first half. And I did. I went in there and I was learning my trash talk. I was learning to be aggressive, we'll say. Uh, so, but you saw something in me that know that knew I could, I could, uh, I could know how to walk that fine line, I guess. I don't know exactly if you were, if you remember that, or if you're uh, proud of that moment, but, uh, I know it helped me in my athletic career. Yeah. I, I don't necessarily <laughs> remember that, but, um, yeah, you know, it's, uh, you always, you're always looking for, uh, for a role, each guy, always my goal. Like, uh, give this something, give something to the players that um, they can be the best on the team at, and, and be a value to the team. Because when people feel valuable and are valuable, the experience is enhanced so much. Oh, yeah. um, so, anything, you know, in that vein, find anything, you know, that uh, someone could be like take. I didn't like, yeah, this is my role. It's a very important role. So I know it was real easy to get inside my head as a player. Uh, and so, uh, you know, <laughs> teaching someone that skill. I mean, I think I do remember like, hey, guys, let's not let's not cut our nails, uh, you know, for the season just because, you know, you cut people and they get blood on them they have to go out of the game or something like that or you know <laughs> stuff like that or don't 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 wear deodorant in the game just so it's it's repulsive to to kind of be around you and you, you get under people's skin so you know standing next to them or guarding them stuff like that um but yeah i mean uh, ryan black that was that, that Oh man, I hope I hope the the fans oh, whatever, out there whatever. can hear. It's a little difficult. There's a little delay, and and uh, Todd's reception are, uh, is a little choppy. I hear the I hear the uh, the crickets out there, Todd. I hear you coming in here and there, but we'll try to keep this thing going. Uh, back to you, Dave Joe, uh, who was on two weeks ago. You know, I asked you about the episode and everything, and you gave me a very high school answer. It actually took me back to when I was in high school. Man, uh, what is this? Twenty years ago is hard to believe and one of your first answers was yeah dave joe had the car we we go to the beach every weekend after after morning work and i remember how valuable that was uh which of the friends had a car that was freedom that was liberty to go do uh high school boys uh things man so that was really funny that that was your first kind of uh, thoughts or phrase or sentence that you said about dave joe although a ton of other great accolades as well yeah, and, uh, you know, he's also, we both coached out at uh, Wingate Park, and so he drove us uh, every Monday, Wednesday, or whatever it was out there, and so we spent a lot of time in that car listening to, I think, the Phil Collins, uh, probably, uh, you know, cassette, cassette tape, <laughs> uh, but yeah, Dave, uh, you know, generous with his, uh, with his resources and uh yeah we spent a lot of a lot of time in that it was blue uh i don't know some type of blue sedan and uh but he upgraded and got uh, i think it was a uh what uh, i don't i don't remember but uh you know, like I said, I mean, he's just, he was, uh, he was generous back then. Cause you know, you didn't get paid for driving out to boys and he was in high school. Right. And, you know, he told you about his family situation, you know, their mom and dad are working really, really hard and 
money's not like thrown on trees and uh but um you know dave just uh yeah i think team player do whatever it takes for the team like kind of like he said um that was his mentality and i you know obviously the lord has blessed him oh man uh, a hundredfold as far as uh, what he spent on gas back in back in the 90s and uh, uh so yeah it's, it was those are great times you know todd you're you're fortunate to have some amazing teammates from from those high school years uh dave was just one of many guys who i'm sure if you called right now and needed something uh he would be at your front door in in a in a heartbeat and you cannot uh, trade those relationships for anything out there. And maybe you don't see each other as often as you like. And every time you do see each other, you're chatting about that, oh man, that, that Chadwick game or junior year, or, you know, things that really don't mean that much in the big scheme of, of life. Uh, but, but man, it's, it's special to hear. And it's why I continue to love this podcast. And one thing Dave said, one of his early statements, he said, you got to get Pete Clark on the get home safe podcast after everything he's been through. And, all the listeners out there who, who just want to hear from Pete Clark. Yeah. Um, keep working them. I'll keep working them from my end. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I talked to uh, John Collins, who's almost a doctor, uh, works in Detroit in the ER uh, again this last week. And, and he was telling me the, you know, he was telling me the details of how miraculous that was. Um, so, uh, you know, he's, he's an inspiration to, to everybody. And because he's such a magnetic person uh, and people love him all around the world, um, you know, something very, that could have been very, very bad turned out to be, you know, pretty good, I think. Yeah. Uh, it, it's incredible. I mean, we were all scared for a while there. Uh, with his situation and what he's been through, what he's accomplished out of all this. I mean, it's, uh, it, it's so refreshing and just amazing to see him traveling now. And just like, it's almost like nothing happened, even though it was a very scary moment, uh, you know, a month or so ago. And, and here we are. So we got to get Pete on the podcast. I've reached out to him. I've chatted with him uh, briefly. Uh, I cannot wait for that. Whenever it comes about. Um, so, so we shall see, but, uh, Todd, I know it was short notice. I appreciate you chatting with me briefly here on a Sunday night. Um, I know you got a lot of things going on, uh, big family. You're down in Southern California. Um, if, if you got time for it, man, let's grab a Philly's best. I don't know if we can or not, but, uh, always fun chat with you, my friend. Yeah. Hey, well, um, I was going to actually test today because, USA baseball. Uh, I think it's thirtieth or thirtieth at uh, three a.m. in the morning. Uh, I thought, you know, for old time's sake, I come out to your place and we watch the ball game. What do you think? Bring the donuts, my friend, and I'm in. I'll be up three a.m. first pitch. We've done it before. Let's do it again, man. USA, USA, and uh, hopefully none of those baseball players, uh, you know, take a knee for the national anthem, and we can cheer them on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You better check those, that time and date though, because uh, I'm not <laughs> sure about that, but uh, wait a minute. You, you, you mess up dates and times. No way. That doesn't you know, happen. It's happened once or twice. <laughs> in my, my, uh, uh, yeah. So I'm supposed to also CP uh, next week sometime. So maybe what we can do is uh, trick at, at dinner or whatever we're having. I can pull out the phone and we'll just have the pop the uh you right there either either he comes to the podcast or we or we bring the podcast to him whatever's got to happen yeah. man let's we gotta right. uh peer pressure whatever man but i'm in 3 a.m first pitch i will watch any baseball game with you man uh especially uh usa baseball so uh let's make that happen thanks again todd my best of the family uh carla and the kids and uh you know uh the deross family as well have a great time while you're here in socal and i hope to see you very soon all right you got it sorry the connection is so bad hey todd get home safe <laughs>
Okay, I guess Todd Carson. We sorry about that connection, guys. I, I threw this together last minute and was just chatting with uh, my good friend Todd uh, about anything really. I don't see him enough. I don't chat with him enough. Uh, but I thought uh, we'd bring him on Sunday or excuse me Monday here just to chat about a few things and to uh, see what he was up to. Uh, I wrote a few things down. Uh, the NBA Finals is still going. We're not really watching that or commenting too much on that. I talked about masks being back in in LA County. And I, I really hope that, I don't know, I, I don't want to encourage people to be unsafe or whatever the, the podcast is get home safe. Right. Um, I would just say this, whatever your belief is, uh, own it, own up to it. Um, you know, uh, we're in a crazy, crazy world, especially us out here in California. It's just, I, I'm not trying to, offend, I, I say this all the time. I don't want to offend anybody. I really don't. I just want to speak my mind. I have, uh, love for so many different people out there, people I agree with, people I disagree with. Uh, I, I mean, uh, me and Valerie, we, we, my girlfriend now, uh, almost five years, we, we disagree on a few things, but, but that we don't let that come between us. And I just wish we could, uh, you know, live that way more uh, fluidly amongst uh, ourselves. But anyway, the coronavirus, the lockdown, I should say more than the pandemic, uh, it really does come between a lot of us. And it, it, it's unfortunate. And I think with the new, mandates and policies here in the upcoming uh, weeks and months, it's probably going to get worse. And it's only going to change really when people do take a stand, people take a stand and, uh, you know, just uh, go with their, uh, go with their gut or what, I don't know. I don't even know what to say. I'm not encouraging anyone to revolt or start a rebellion or anything like that. Uh, I'm just saying uh, we need to Try to embrace common sense some some way or another. And, and wherever you stand on that, uh, hey, to each his own. I just wish uh, it was live and let live, uh, to, to quote the great libertarians of our time. Uh, anyway, a few things I wrote down. Uh, let's see here. Master back. Uh, breakfast every day. This is totally random. But you know what I don't understand is some of these restaurants – or fast food chains or whatever, where breakfast is only served till 11. So let me get this straight. I mean, truly think about this. Sometimes at like 2 p.m., you're craving an egg McMuffin. Maybe you work nights and you're not up until noon and you start work or whatever. You want an egg McMuffin. You want a breakfast burrito. You're telling me you can't make eggs at 1 p.m.? You can't make eggs at 12 p.m.? Like, where did this, this cutoff time come from? I don't understand it. I mean, is there a separate region of like the McDonald's where these are Big Macs, these are Egg McMuffins, these are fries, these are hash browns? Like, I, what is the reasoning behind that? And it's not just fat. I mean, it's anything. Breakfast only served until, because you guys out there know, some of you know, some of you have, you know, those pancakes occasionally, not all the time. I'm not a pancake guy, actually, but some of you guys have pancakes at like 7 p.m. It's rare, I know, but. There's a few out there. There's a few of you out there listening who, who do that. I mean, where, where did this uh, cutoff time come from? I hate seeing that. You go to a place, uh, breakfast uh, served until 10 30, 11 o'clock. You know what is amazing? You know what is the three best words you can find anywhere on a menu? Breakfast all day. Tell me that doesn't get you psyched. Even if you weren't in the mood for breakfast at that moment, when you go into that establishment, you look on the menu, you see breakfast all day, and you think to yourself, you know what? I could go for a for an, uh, bacon and egg sandwich right now. I could go for some huevos rancheros. I could go for a, a, a breakfast burrito. Don't tell me that's not what you guys how you react when you see breakfast all day, three of the most beautiful words that have ever been side by side. Maybe I'm the crazy one and I'm a lunatic, I, whatever. I'm just telling you how I feel. I'm just speaking my mind here. I don't know who invented this. Breakfast stops at 1030 at 11. I know for most of us, whatever, we you know you eat a certain breakfast food. You can only eat a certain amount of time. I'm just saying. Why's there got to be a, a deadline? Why is there got to be a cutoff? Let's let's promote uh, uh, equity, equality. I don't know what you want to call it. But breakfast should be all day. Dinner should be all day. If you want a steak and lobster at 9 a.m., 
That is your God-given right. I, 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 if you want a turkey sandwich at at midnight, that's a lunch. That's a lunch. See, see, lunch and dinner seem to go all day, but there's this brief window in time, breakfast, that is like, oh, you only have this much time. And when does the end of the night turn into breakfast? You know what I mean? Say you're a dude who's out late at night at a bar or something, and then you're, you're looking to get some uh, some munchies or whatever. When does breakfast start? When does the night end? And when does breakfast start? Is it 3 a.m.? Is it 4 a.m.? I don't know. I'm asking quite, I, I am asking questions on this podcast for you guys. I don't think breakfast should ever end, just like I don't think lunch should ever end, just like I don't think dinner should ever end. There should be no judgment. We're supposed to not judge people, not judge their actions, right? Equality. Breakfast should never end. 10.30, 11 o'clock. I think Valerie's knocking on my door here because she's like, you're done. Get off the microphone. Right. You You didn't hear that. Hello. She's ranting. Uh, she, she never stops. Uh, I'm ranting about breakfast now, meaning I have, I'm out of things to talk about. I'm not, but uh, I digress. That will wrap up today's episode of the Get Home Save Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for Sam Hersma for uh, jumping on. Thank you for Todd Carson for jumping on. Uh, I got to be honest, there's not a lot of sports to chat about. We don't follow the NBA here at the Get Home Safe Podcast. Uh, hockey's over. Um, it, we're in the dog days of summer with baseball. Uh, there were some good fights over the weekend. We'll try to cover that. Other than that, we're waiting for football season at this point. So Mondays might be a little rough. I'll try to bring on Sam. I'll try to bring on Todd. Uh, if, if only for a few minutes. And if you're someone who wants to come on the podcast for 10, 15 minutes, hey, let's make that happen on a Sunday. Record our Monday episode, whatever the case may be. Uh, for those of you who are listening to this podcast, I want to reward you with the upcoming guest on Friday. We're going to be joined by Matt Brown, a professional photographer for over 35 years, uh, mostly in the sports field. He's, he's covered the Lakers, the Dodgers, uh, pretty much every event you could think of. Cal State Fullerton Athletics. He's got some great stories. He's a fellow podcaster himself running a podcast called Just a Good Conversation, which is exactly what it says it is. Uh, an absolute blast. I recorded with Matt Brown uh, last week. It's almost two hours. We just kept going. And so you may have to break it up into two parts, uh, but I encourage you guys not just listen to it yourselves, but, in, but uh, pass it along to other people because it was one of my favorite interviews I've done. So, uh, so great. Such easy listening. Uh, please join us on Friday for our conversation with Matt Brown. And of course the weekly Wednesday weigh in with Bill Barnes, he and I hung out Saturday night, uh, you know, got into a little bit of not in trouble really, but, uh, you know, we had some fun. So we'll tell you all about that on Wednesday. Be sure to tune in on our Facebook, uh, live video on Tuesday when Bill Barnes and I record our Wednesday show, send me questions, send us topics. I hope to hear from you guys, just like you hear from us Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Matt Brown on Friday. You do not want to miss that. Even if you can't hear it on Friday, get to it at some point on the weekend. But guys, have a great rest of your week. I look forward to you joining us on Wednesday. But guys, as always, no matter what you're doing, whether you're out on the town or around in third base, get home safe. <laughs>